can draw the sun or the stars and the moon. I can draw anything. How about you? Ready, set, draw! Hi there, I'm David Ezra Stein, the author and illustrator of this book, Honey. And today I'd like to show you how I did the bear in the illustrations of Honey. Ready, set, draw. A lot of people know about this kind of pen, that's a ballpoint pen, has ink inside of it. But for this book, Honey, I used something called a bamboo pen. And this pen needs to be dipped into a pot of ink, uh, like this one, uh, to be able to draw. So, I'm gonna fit this pen right in here. And then I need to wipe off the extra ink a little bit. And this, this is a beautiful pen because it can do all different kinds of lines. For the bear's head, I like to use a nice thick line. And when the ink first comes out, it gives me a very thick line. And as it gets more dry, it gets to be a skinny little scratchy line. So I like to use thick lines for some parts of the bear. And I like to use the skinny lines for other parts of the bear. The outside of the bear's ears are thick and then the inside, I can use the tip of my pen and make a skinny little scratchy line for the inside of his ear. And so I can keep on doing thick and thin lines as I draw the bear. And his nose has a little Y shape, but you can only see half of the Y here. So there's one line and then the second line. And that's the pattern on the top of his nose. And you'll only be able to see one eye in this position, so here's a nice dark eye right here for the bear. Okay, so as I'm going along, whenever I'm about to draw a new part of the bear, I try to imagine what it looks like in my head before I draw it. So now I'm imagining a nice furry ruff underneath the bear's chin, and I think I'd like to do it in a soft line. So I'm gonna do a nice soft line for the fur under his chin. And I'm imagining what his arms are going to be doing. And I think one of them is going to be going up in the air. So I'll do that up above his head here. I like to make the top of his arm thicker and then the bottom is a little thinner and softer. And his claws are going to be really nice little scratchy claw lines like this that I can make with very easily with the bamboo pen. His other arm will be going out behind him. Some more scratchy little claws over here. See, I think a line that you draw can feel like, it should feel like the thing that you're trying to draw. So a claw line should be scratchier than a fur line. A fur line can be nice and soft. And his belly is very soft and round. I like to make his back nice and strong and dark. Might even put a little shading on his back there. What a cute bear. Now I'm gonna make him sort of dancing. So I'll put one foot down on the ground here. 
And that's an important foot because it's holding up the bear, so it has to be strong. And the other foot is a little lighter, it's sticking up in the air. So I'm using a lighter line for that. It's always nice to ground your figure by putting a little shadow underneath to show where the ground is. And then of course you have to sign your name when you're finished with your drawing. David Ezra Stein. So that's the drawing of our bear. Now we have to wait for it to dry for a little while before adding the watercolor. Okay, so now our drawing of the bear is dry and it's time to add some color to give him this nice black and tan coloring that he has in the book. So the first thing I'm gonna do is called an underpainting. It means a layer of paint that's underneath all the other layers of paint. And I like to use for the bear some burnt umber color, and I add some water to it. This is watercolor. So I'm gonna take my brush, get some water on it, get a little bit of the watercolor. And I have a piece of scrap paper here that's water, also watercolor paper, but it's just for testing colors. So I'm gonna test this out and see how it's looking. That's a little dark, so I'll maybe add a tiny bit of water. as I go along. And I'm just gonna take this color and start putting it into the bear to give him that nice tan underpainting. And I'll go a little darker on the tips of his ears, the back of his head. Um, the tops of his arms. and anywhere that I want um, his body to feel strong. So I'll give him strong, just like I was doing the strong lines before, I'll give him strong color in certain places to make um, those parts of him have emphasis. And the front of his face is pretty light, so I'm gonna put extra water in that part. And the great thing about watercolor is when you put water next to it, it starts to spread out. Some people are a little afraid to let the watercolor spread out, but not me. I love how that happens. I'll make his paws on the bottom darker as well. And I'll just put some water next to this paint and it will start to spread and give him a beautiful light colored belly. Here. It could be a little darker. And now I forgot his, his snout or his nose, so I'm gonna do a little bit of dark brown on his nose. And you can see how dark that got right there. But one of the secrets of a good painting is to have some dark colors next to light colors. It makes it more interesting. So I'm making some parts of him a little extra dark. And that's the underpainting. So now I'm gonna let the underpainting dry before I do the next coat of paint. Okay, so we're ready for the last layer of the bear's fur. And the bear is kind of a black bear in the book, but I didn't wanna use, I don't wanna use just the color black or just a black ink for the fur. This is actually a mixture of two different colors, a dark blue 
and a dark brown. And the dark brown is similar to what we used for the underpainting. So I'll take that again. And then I have some dark blue in here. Now is, this is the time when I get to be a scientist and mix up a special potion here. And I'll just add a little bit of blue and some brown. And I can tell that this is looking very blue, so I'm gonna keep adding brown to it. And I'll start testing it out on my scrap paper. That's looking pretty good, but a little too blue still. So maybe I'll pour some extra brown into the blue. Still blue. This blue is a very strong color. I have to add some more brown. And when I hit the point where the brown and blue are mixing exactly right, I'll get a blackish, interesting color. That's looking pretty good. I can see the blue and brown at the same time, but they also look gray or, or black. So I'm gonna start with the tips of the ears and the nose and the paws, just like we did before, to make those the darkest parts. And I'm using a lot of water so I can spread out the paint. You see how that's starting to look like a black bear? Paws, tail, and feet all get a very dark color. And I don't have that much time because my paint is going to start to dry. So I have to put some water next to the paint that I've already put down and start to bleed it across the bear. and start to blend it across the bear so that the bear has a nice dark fur and also some light fur. If I get too much on the face, I can just remove some paint with my brush. So I'm racing against the watercolor and trying to spread it out before it dries. But I love this color, it came out very nice. And his tummy is pretty light colored, so I don't even need that much paint there. A little more there. And that looks like a beautiful bear. But we're missing a couple of finishing touches. So first I'm gonna put a little bit of brownish red in the nose and ears. I have some pans of watercolor here. As you can see, they're very well-loved watercolors. I've used them a lot. And I just need a little bit of that nice reddish brown for the nose so the nose stands out. And then I put a little bit inside the ears to make them look nice and warm. And that makes the bear come alive. And the last thing I'm gonna do is, I have an opaque white watercolor. That means you can't see through it when it's on, on top of another color. So I'm gonna take a little bit of white and add water to it. It's actually dry right now. And then I'll put this right on the bear's snout. Mm -hmm. 
That's our bear, and I hope that you have a lot of fun trying different kinds of ink lines and also using watercolor in your own art. <laughs> <laughs>